proofs all along here, if you think about it. If you, uh, once you understand what proofs are, uh, if you look at the previous tutorial, you, you were asked to say change this to a single trig function, and you went all the way down here and you found that it equals something. I don't know. This is going to be cosine of x. Basically what a proof is, is it already tells you what it's going to be equal to, and it says show that that's true. Instead of saying we're not going to tell you what it's equal to, you have to figure it out, you show that this is true. Now that sounds not harder, does it? That sound easier? What, why, why would that be easier? Gives you what you're trying to find. The only, di or the only tough thing, I guess, is it's not always going to be a single trig function. Sometimes it'll be show that this expression is equal to some other expression, which might make it harder. It just depends. Okay? So, the, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I put these uh, fill in the blanks things, and I, I don't necessarily know whether it's a, a great idea or not because I tend to put in too many blanks. You already know that you can verify a trig identity using one of two methods. A trig identity is just this is equal to this for all values of the variable, unless there's restrictions. One way you could, you know, if, if we know that, um, we'll pick a simple one here, like tangent of theta equals sine theta over cos theta. You could verify that. Verifying just means checking. It doesn't mean proving it. It means checking it. One thing you could do is graph both sides. Okay, graphing both sides and then making sure that they're the same. Congruent, equal, I don't know what you want to put here. The same. The same, congruent, equal, something like that, right? The second would be to, what else, how else could you check whether this works? Instead of going through the process of graphing each side. Yeah, just putting putting some number in for, for theta here, putting an angle in for each of those and seeing if it works. Uh, substituting, substitution. <coughs> substituting, I guess, makes sense with how I have it there. Although they can be verified, it's not sufficient to prove them. To prove them, you have to work algebraically and show that the two sides are equal. Okay, uh, verifying is just kind of checking. Uh, proving is is showing that it's true for all cases. If we if we substitute values, we're only checking for those particular values, right? Right. You could say um, x plus two is five. That's always true. Somebody might say it's always true. Look, if I put in a three here, it works, right? You see, it works. That's true. It's true all the time. Because I put in a number and it works. Is that true? Is this true all the time for every value of x? Obviously not, right? It's not true for every value of x. In fact, it's only true for the one I picked. You can't prove something using specific values because it might be true for that value but not for every value. Okay? To show it's true for all values, you have to be able to work with it algebraically and show both sides are equal. Okay? Show algebraically two sides are equal. You've sort of been doing that, the preliminary of simplifying things so far. You have a couple different options here. One option is to work only on one side and then try algebraically to make it equal to the other side. Okay, so that would be if, if we give you an identity where you have two sides of, of the identity, take one side and make it look like the other side. That's a way to prove it. That's probably the best way. Alternately, you can uh, you can work on both sides separately. Okay, you need to work separately on each side and show that the two sides are equal. Oops, color change. Okay, this will make more sense once you actually try one. And we'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by either working only on one side or on both sides. Somehow you have to show that both sides are equal of this thing. Okay, all this all this stuff in here may again might make more sense uh, later. The reason is because 
people have learned to solve equations and they learn that you do the same thing to both sides, like minus 2, minus 2, and you get x is 3. This you learned in grade 8 or 9 or whatever, 7. You learned you can do the same thing to both sides if you know it's equal, right? And you, you probably forgot that part is if you're told that this is equal, then you can do the same thing to both sides. The problem with an identity is uh, you don't know that it's equal. It's almost like it's a question mark. If we have, a, if we have an identity we're going to prove, right? If we're going to try and prove that this is equal to cos x, it's almost like there's a question mark here. You can't do the same thing to both sides. You can't go, I want to times this by cos, so I'm going to times this by cos. You can't work on both sides as though it's an equation. You can work on one side separately. You can say, okay, I'm going to just leave this side alone, and I'm going to change this to cos squared x. And then I'm going to you know, simplify it. Cos squared over cos is just cos. So there I've shown, I've shown that it's equal. I didn't touch this side, and I didn't do kind of the same thing to both sides. Okay, or if you, you know, you can work on both sides as long as you don't kind of do the same thing to both sides, do an operation. You can't cross multiply something and say, look, they're equal because I did this. Um, anyways, getting back to this. Um, my hint here, this is this is kind of a hint for you. If you're trying to prove a trig identity like this. If one expression looks more complicated, in quote marks, that's not a very mathematical word, right? If something looks more complicated, it's probably easier to start on that side and try to simplify that, right? It's probably easier to try and simplify the side that's more complicated. Otherwise, the it's probably harder to start on the simpler side and try to complicate it. In math, a lot of questions, especially in math 10, they said, number one, simplify. And they give you some expression, right? n squared minus 4 over n plus 2. I, I, I can't tell you, if, I don't think there's a question where it said the opposite, right? You never, you never saw questions that said complicate. And it says... N, something like that, some simple expression, complicate. I'm sure you could do a good job of doing that. In fact, you probably did some of that with your things that said to simplify, but it doesn't say this. It's easier to pick what you think is the more complicated, in quote marks, side. This is how I set this up. I set it up with little hints over at the side here, with a nice little cloud around them. Um, the reason is because I want you to work through these guided examples, rather than have me do them, if I go through and do these, you copy them down, but you haven't done a lot of thinking about them. You're going to get these not by kind of, there, there's not going to be you know another question that looks like this that you can copy the example or follow the example. In general, you want to try and show that these are equal. I put in this little framework here, left side, right side, with a big, huge line here, because you're keeping them separate. You're working down one side or the other, or both if you want to. If you want to try and pick a side to work on and you're trying to decide which one's more complicated, this involves multiplication of two things. This involves subtraction. You might think, oh, subtraction is easier than multiplying, so I'm going to start on, this, on, start on this side. The thing that you probably want to do is realize that if you have two terms... This is two terms. And you you can take two terms and combine them together to make a single term. Or you can try and take a single term and split it apart. I, I think this side is the more complicated side because it has two terms. It's easier to take two terms and combine them together than to try and break it apart. But you could easily work on either side. I would start on this side. Can you work on some of these things? Read the little hints here. You know... If you know what you're doing, try and go through. In the end, you know, you're going to have a bunch of lines here. What's your last line over here going to be? It's going to be what? Yeah, this thing, right? You're going to make it look like the same thing here. Or if you find that you just can't do it, what you might have is some other random thing here and the same random thing there. 
So you can either, the best way to do it is if you can work completely down one side and make it look like what you're given on the other side. That's the best way. An acceptable way is to end on whatever you want to end on here and end on the same thing over here. This is acceptable, but it's not as good as the other way. Okay? You might find that that's your, you, you have to resort to that and that's fine. There's, there's lots of guided examples here. You're trying to show this in the end, right? If, you, if you've made the two sides equal and your algebra is correct, you're good. Okay? Don't try to just fake it and go blah, 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 blah. Oh, look, I did it. <laughs> okay? Unless you're on the provincial exam and that's your only resort, then you try that. Okay? And try to fool the markers. But here, you, you do it properly.